Do you talk to Obama still? I was Obama's favorite artist. He actually met with me. Obama met with me and my mama to say that he was running for office back in 2008 um, and that he wanted the support. And everybody was so into this idea of the black president. And we were always, you were always cool. And it's also like, you know, how many, how many of us are there? You know, Obama level, yay level, you know, Virgil level, um, just black, you know, so brilliant that we cut through all of the lines of racism. Like, you just can't get rid of us. Nat King Cole level, uh, Dave Chappelle level. So, in some place, we'd have to be friends and get along because it's like, yo, you're at that level. You're like a, you know, Formula One Lewis Hamilton race car driver. We're still driving a white car, but we're the best race car drivers uh, that ever existed. And that was, that was me and Obama's connection. But soon as I wasn't saying the things that I was supposed to say as a rapper, uh, our connection faded. So you don't talk to him anymore? I'll talk to him if I see him. Yep. But I guarantee you he see me. I don't even know the man. I just thought that sounded cool. <laughs> <laughs> One idea that was in my head about three minutes ago that I really want to say is a, uh, that's really interesting about the, uh, when a, a companies get the BLM managers. What's a BLM manager? Black Lives, Ma Black Lives Matter uh, office manager. <laughs> it's basically you get a semi-influential black person to become the face of a white company. Yeah. Right, so that means like in the design world, in the art world, they actually would pick artists that were less talented than other artists based on their influence. Uh, not based on their actual work, because everyone is vying for influence and an, and an opinion. Everyone is afraid of losing their opinion. So with Nike, right, Nike is as famous as, you say Nike's more famous than PayPal, right? Yeah. Right. What, what number company do you think PayPal is? I don't know. Number four. Overall? Overall, you got, well you, well, you know what the number one is, right? It's Apple. Yeah. Um, I'm forgetting number two, but number three is uh, McDonald's, then SpaceX is maybe six or seven. It's really interesting that as lit as Elon is, his previous company is actually still worth more than, uh, than SpaceX. So. What number company do you think Nike is, the Nike? Number 321. It's not there to be as big a financial company as it can be. It's there as an influencer because black people love Nike. So Nike is like a company that is redlining and gerrymandering black people. So the reason why Gap wanted me to go the Gap, it wasn't based on, oh, we need to get our stocks up. You know, it's like these companies, when they've been around for a long time, Gap's not like, they're like, we're in the rag trade, we're never gonna be Apple. And everyone, all of these American companies somehow took this, this deal where they start putting in these really awkward, weird number kind of CEOs. Like Nike's got one, um, uh, the Gap had one, it didn't work out. And there's all of these weird operators inside of companies, even in Balenciaga, you know. The, and they, um, they're just there for control. Steve Jobs talked about it. It's the most important thing you can have is control. Look at me. 
all the money, all the influence, and I have to act a complete ass to have any say so of anything that my children are doing because that a group of people have control and say so over all the children inside of the clan. So that's what these companies are set up for. That's the type of CEOs they're hiring, especially when the founders are out of there. They kind of just give the companies up to a bunch of people and they're all in cahoots. Like anyone that ever worked with me, they just look at, oh, who's yay farming for talent that we can hire to be our new BLM office manager. <laughs> like, kind of like Obama. What, what do you, you, th you, think, you think of Obama as a BLM office manager? Best one ever. Yeah. Best one ever. And you know, I think Obama, just like Virgil, these people were truly black to their core and truly brilliant to their core. But they went into situations thinking that they could do it the white way as a black man. And we saw what color Obama's hair was when he went in, and we saw what color it was when, when he went out. You know, Virgil lost all his hair, you know, and eventually passed away. So when I have techniques that are revolutionary, if I raise my voice, if I express myself on Instagram, it's a colonic. And people can say, oh, that, this, this what you're doing is toxic. If, if what I'm saying is toxic, I gotta do everything to get it out of my body. And there'll be times where I see a level of like oppression Parisian proper, like next level, you know, France owns 80% of African banks level colonization oppression. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm not going to let you guys kill me. But one thing that has to really happen, say if Trump ran, right? We're not just gonna be black influence. We're gonna be vision and creativity. We've got to rethink who we are as a species. Right now, we're, 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 we practice killing ourselves every day. Like, murder is legal in America, you know. In abortion. Yes. Uh, so, whoever gets the position needs to listen to the vision. I didn't know it was gonna rhyme when I first started. <laughs> they need to have Elon, they need to have me. They, you should start with those two and then we'll get to the rest of them. We could pull in a Johnny Ives, we'll pull in all of our living, super brilliant people. And we need to analyze and and not just sell out for the cash. Like these Fortune 500 companies, they're just selling out for the cash. And put God first. And the best representation of God is the children. The children is the extension of the family. Put the families first. There's so many things, suburbs. Uh, the train tracks being ripped up by GM just for capitalism. All these ideas that we have. We're, we're now living in a place where we're the orphans of capitalism. And we just have to take a pause and rethink how we can have the most beautiful existence possible for our children, for the kids. And we're all kids. Yeah. We're all God's kids. We're all sons of Abraham. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.